Burn, burn, burn. What, what, what is this about? So that's the big channel to look forward to. Thank you, bro. It's your brother Tahaka Play, and you're watching Black Ice TV 7. Peace in Islam. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Big up Black Ice TV 7. They're always supporting, always repping. It's love all the time. Peace. Emotions don't just happen, they grow, they mature. And they mature because your mother went through her rites of passage, your father went through his rites of passage, and the circle's unbroken. What happens is the father hugs the mother. And a hormone goes up in her called oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone. But he said she's pregnant and he ain't bonding to her. That decreases the ability to have oxytocin, which decreases the child's ability to have mm. oxytocin. Okay. I don't know why people look at me like this. Nonetheless, I'm just saying that nature does not forgive or forget. That's something that God does. You can be a Muslim, you can be a Jew, you can be a Christian. If you fall down and scrape your knee, they ain't gonna forgive you, gonna put a scar on there. Cause nature says, no, you mess with me, I'm kicking your ass. I'm just telling you, nature is mother nature and father nature. And father nature shows up and says, no, <laughs> you shouldn't have messed with me. And leaves a scar on your knee forever. Cause nature does not forgive or forget. That's why we can use my book self diagnose and look at you and say, oh, your mother was stressed in the second trimester. Oh, there's something wrong with your kidneys. Because the impression is on you forever, which some people like to call acupuncture. You heard of acupuncture? Taken out of our science called shuko. Everything's been stolen from you. Shuko, everything. Fragmented and stolen. And they feed it back to you and you say it's theirs. You know, mm. I was getting ready to use a, uh, one of the Europeans' curse words. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should say Rotterdam instead of Dan. Mm -hmm. You know, damn well, I think we can dance. But they always dance in ballerets and ballerinas, which used to be called pornographic dancing in France in the 16th century. You know that's a porno show. You know that. 
those men walk running around with tights and look like they'd smuggle grapes somewhere. <laughs> that was pornography back in the day, France. See? And since they couldn't have high heels, because high heels were designed by men, poor men, really. The rich people said we stand above the poor. That's why they have high heels. So the slut dance on ballerinas would dance on their toes because they couldn't buy the high heels. And that's where you get toe dancing from. In any case, all I'm trying to say is we have been miseducated. Why, why you love black families, the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson. We live and direct. I want to give a shout out to Black Ice TV. Make sure you watch it, support it. The news you can use, the information you can use. Youth, Pan-Africanism, economics, family, community. Make sure you support Black Ice TV because Dr. Umar Johnson does. Sacred is sacred. On the thigh mother and father is the basics. Rise like his poster to slip out the matrix. Still dumb Thinking this is entertainment, escape to reality. Most yeah, I keep it raw like Sarah Setti. Whole tech, but if you're an enemy, you catch a broke net. Bang on the system like bullets from barrels released. Sulu comedic like African bombarder. The beast got a hold of the streets, rectify it like Malcolm. Watch your friends and your enemies, never doubt them. Never should you participate in their traditions. Cause when you do, you put your own life into submission. Who's the victim? Tell me who the fuck will listen and step up and take charge. Most of course. Slipping if you don't. together and we bless each other with our wisdom knowing that each one of us can make a mighty difference so as we heal ourselves we in fact heal all our relations thank you most high thank you to Andre. Imagine if Malcolm would have never got killed. Crack in the hallways would have never got filled. Imagine if Marcus would have never had a chill. Blacks wouldn't be living in overpacked jails. Imagine if Asada never had to run. J. Edgar Hoover would have never won. Imagine if Trayvon would have had the gun. Black Lives songs would have never been sung. So I wonder how this world's gonna ever be. A place where these wrongs gonna be.
Peace, what's going on UK? This is KT, the Arch Degree here with Black Ice TV 7. Eat this rice, okay? Drink this wine because it's good for your blood. And that's crazy. How many people think that drinking wine is good? Anybody, know, anybody think that? Has anybody heard it? Has anybody told you that if you drink wine, it's good for the blood? Huh? Oh, red wine. I'm, yeah, stand to be corrected. Red wine. That's ridiculous. Because why is it ridiculous? Let's use our melanin. What is wine? You said olive oil? <laughs> Okay, you, I, I was hearing and I was reading lips and I just didn't get that right. Okay? So it is. It's alcohol. But it's fermented what? You understand that? And so then it turns to what? And then when sugar gets into the system, now I'm teaching you from a cellular level, what is it going to do to that cell as soon as that sugar gets there? It's going to take the moisture out of it. Okay? Sugar robs the body of moisture. So if you rob the body of moisture from the cell, so if the cell has no moisture, that means the cell is what? It means it's dehydrated. So if you have a dehydrated cell, then that dehydrated cell, the job of it is to make tissue. So what kind of tissue are you making? Dehydrated, right? Y'all not with me? Okay, so dehydrated tissue makes what? Organs. Okay, and then the dehydrated organ makes what? But if you're using your mind, and if I want to fight your black ass, if I want to be the adversary, and I don't want you to amount to nothing, I'm going to give you what? And I'm going to tell you it's good to drink what? And you go, and, and it's up to your melanin to say whether or not you're going to do it. But if you listen to somebody Italian, you're going to say, yeah, well, well, that might be right. Well, for y'all, Y'all, Y-A-W, y'all, not for us. Yeah, I know, that was a little ghetto phonetic spelling. I know, okay? My point is this. We are talking about melanin. It is a very wide subject. Melanin is wide. But you have to be able to applicate it where you're at. And to applicate it where you're at, you have to do just the basics, your food choices, okay? Your financial choices. How can your finances ruin your melanin? How can it happen? Can you make the connection? Make the connection for me. Because I'm not pulling this information out my back pocket. How can your finances? Okay, so depression and stress over your finances. How else? How can all of you have money and the, the way you use it can affect your melanin. How specifically does that happen? You buy what you ain't got no business buying. You understand that? But that was your choice. When you walk in your house and you open up your cabinet and you open up your refrigerator and when you look in your closet, those are the choices that you made. And if we have to do like a report card, give yourself a report card. Okay, like, do you have A's, B's, C's over here? What do y'all, you all got the same things we have in the U.S.? So think to yourself, everybody close your eyes and look in your refrigerator. Okay, now what's your grade? Okay, I got one A, and, and I, I check. Okay, I check. How many B's do I have in the house? Thank you for, how many C's do I have in the house? I know hey, that, hell, no, I'm not gonna give myself a C. How many C's do I, how many people have frozen meat in their freezer. Uh-oh. <laughs> you ain't in church, excuse me. Okay, so that right there is like a CD average. You understand that? It's not fresh, which is very hard to have meat. I, under, well, I understand, I used to eat meat a long time ago. I'm not brand new to the game, you understand? However, the meat that you are probably buying is not organic meat, is it? And yes, who said yes? You got organic meat? Where you get it from? Tell me. He said they say. Okay. 
Uh. That's what I'm saying. You can ruin your melanin based upon your choices. And I'm just trying to make it real for you. I'm not talking about a pie in the sky. I'm talking about being revolutionary, going to your kitchen saying, um, I think it's time for me to get rid of the salt. The sea salt, the Himalayan salt, the pink salt, all the salt, because it dehydrates the cell. And if I have a de dehydrated cell, I have dehydrated tissue. I think I'm gonna get rid of this. How many of us can do that? Just, just hold it to yourself. Then the seasoning salt. How many people use seasoning salt? Mm. I'm thank you, my brother. I really appreciate you know power to the people. I got one person talking to me. When you season your food, black people, what are you seasoning it with? What kind? Okay, you do jerk. You keeping it real. What else? Salt. Seasoning salt. Name the seasoning salt that you use over here. All and purpose. I think it's used in the, in the Caribbean a lot. All purpose seasoning. All purpose seasoning. How many people have that in their cabinets? Well, you're burning your cells out. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not knocking you. I'm not. I'm just trying to make you aware that the choices that we make can affect our melanin. I don't like bland food either. There are a lot of vegan seasonings that you can get that taste very good that does not contain salt. You understand that? And so you must make yourself aware of these things and say, you know what? All purpose, you know, you don't serve no purpose no more in my cabinet. And you have to get rid of it. You have to make everything I'm saying actable to yourself. So we done went in your refrigerator, okay? How many of us are drinking and eating at the same time? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait to your hand. I know it take a long time for the hand to do this. I'm gonna wait. I know, I know it take maybe like five minutes. Okay. If you're drinking and eating at the same time, we're talking about melanin, right? Melanin is the center of every cell, so we're talking about the body. If you drink and eat at the same time, the body says I can only digest one. So what is it digesting? And the simplest one. The liquid. So what's happening to the other foods that you're eating? It goes into your intestines and your intestines tries to do the digestion that your duodenum should have done. So then you start getting gas. How many of us know what gas is? Now tell me. Tell me ain't nobody you ever had gas. Okay? Now I know y'all want to act brand new, but I want to if anybody's never had gas before, please raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand high and stand up so everybody can see you. We're going to put you on Facebook and Instagram. Okay? The gas comes from, you have two types. You have fermentation and you have putrefaction. What ferments? What ferments? Sugar. So your fruits and your carbohydrates, your starches. Okay? So what, um, I said fermentation and what else? I didn't know. Putrefication, thank you my brother, you know, it be like that sometimes. What putrefies inside your intestines? Meat. 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 Those of us who eat meat, and some of us say, you know, I'm a vegetarian, but I eat fish. <laughs> You're a vegetarian, but you eat fish. Okay. I let people stand in their realities. If you eat anything that has eyes, then it knocks you out of being a vegetarian. So if you're eating fish or you're eating meat, it accumulates in the intestines. And when it accumulates in the intestines, the body has to heat the body up to digest it. So that's where you're getting your acid reflux from. Does anybody eat certain kind of food you just can't eat? It's like, I know I gotta stay away from this, I gotta stay away from that. It's because you're not combining your foods correctly. Do you understand that? This all affects your melanin. Do you see how wide this subject is? I could go on, I done talked about your money. I done talked about your hair. I done talked about them ball busting pants. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I'm just saying, they trying to make our men look like women now. You understand, you don't know the difference. You know, they trying to emasculate our men to look like women. And we not having that. That's out. Let them wear that stuff, okay? Let them, you know, get, the, and I've seen now that men are wearing weaves, we gonna leave that alone too, okay? But all this stuff is talking about melanin, so when I really ask you, do you love the skin that you're in, I want you to think about everything and tell me into yourself, is there places that you can improve? 
Is there places that you can improve? Yes. We have to improve together as a group and say, guess what? I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. Well, I don't have that problem, but I'm going to get rid of this. You understand? Once you start getting rid of things, then you have to start adding things. And so the things that we have to add as a group, when you put melanin together, it is so powerful. They're afraid of us coming together. That's why they got the light ones. That's why they got the dark ones. That's why they got the ones that got the good hair. And that's why they got the ones that got the bad hair. They didn't just separate the shit out of us. And we didn't be like, no, boo. I don't care what your hair look like. We're all one people. We have to start doing like-minded things. And I have to say this morning, we went to a school and it was for young black boys, okay? You have the power to do that. How many of us have nieces and nephews and children that you can deal with on a Saturday and you can teach them about their culture? None of y'all? Nobody has a nephew? Anybody got any kids? None of y'all? Can you put your hand up? You're responsible. You understand that? If you see these young people and they don't know about themselves, guess who's at fault? Us. Guess who's at fault? Us. And we can't keep on talking about what they did to us. We just can't keep on doing that. So this whole thing is about improving yourself and improving the young people so we can kick their ass. Because I don't like being at the bottom. I really don't. And personally, I'm not going to be at the bottom. Personally. Because there's just certain things that I'm not going to take. Because my melanin is strong. Okay? I love my melanin. And I may not be doing everything right. But I try to improve myself on a daily basis. How many of us meditate? Or pray, whatever you call it. Okay, very good. How many of us use it? Do you know your melanin will tell you when something's about to happen before it happens? Is that that voodoo stuff? <laughs> uh, don't talk that stuff to me. I don't want to hear that. I'm scared of that. How in the hell are you scared of yourself? We are at Slam Radio and we watch Black Eyes TV 7. Yes! Black! Build your economy, black people. It's what makes you intuitive, okay? That's why you don't want to feed it the white rice. That's why you don't want to feed it the salt. That's why you don't want to give it weed. You understand? You want it to be strong so you can know. You can be that beam of light and you can know things before they happen. How many of us actually exercise that? Because we all have it. When you're told something, do you say, oh, something said, and you call it something? How many got that voice named something? You call it something? Let's keep it real. How many of us have made a relationship with it? Made a relationship? You know what I do? Because I'm very intuitive. And now when I hear the voice, I say, thank you so much. What do you want me to do with this information? Okay? Because I, I can look at you and I can see things. And why did you tell me about this young man right here? Why did you tell me? What, do, you, do you want me to repeat it? And it'll tell you yes or no. But we have not exercised that gift enough so when it, it normally gives us the information, guess what we do? 
We either hear it and then we dismiss it. We don't have the conversation with it. When we start having conversations, you understand, with that melanin, with our spirit, do you know how powerful we are? We can know things before they happen. How many of us get information and we just dismiss it? Does that sound familiar? How many of us has dated somebody and you knew? I'm getting reverb, I'm trying to win. You knew you shouldn't have. How many of us have done business with somebody? How many times has somebody come to you and they ask you about something and you knew the answer was no? And they had such a good dialogue with you. You went in your pocket and you gave it to them. Can you hear me? Do you understand that's your melanin? Melanin is powerful. Now can you imagine having all these gifts and a white person not having half of them? And he looking at you like, oh my God, if these people really know what they possess, I'm in trouble. So let me give them, let me put this sugar on sale. Let me put this bad meat in their neighborhoods. Let me put these liquor stores on every corner. You understand the psychology of what I'm saying to you? Let me give you a bad loan. How many of us have gone to buy something and you don't even look at the interest rate? You just say, oh my gosh, all I gotta do is give them $100 down. You gave them $100 down, but how much was the interest? That's using your melanin. Melanin is a wise subject. When I ask you, are you comfortable in the skin that you're in? It means you understand all of that. And what you don't understand, you need to seek it out. And when you seek it out, that if we want to give thanks to Black Ice TV 7 when I'm in UK, it's always an honor to come on Black Ice TV 7. I suppose I'm going to talk about a melanin. Uh, it's not a uh, difficult thing to understand. It just has different names based on what scientists you're talking to. We change names of things often. If we're talking about colors, we're going to say lycopene. We're going to say uh, we in, uh, we uh, talk about melanin, but we use color names to give you the various shades of melanin. Yellow, orange, we say flavonoids. Red, we say lycopene. We say xanathine, that's purplish. We say lutein, we say rutin. These are color names for substance. But we don't tell you we're using the color names for it because that would give away the key to understanding the melanin. If it's alive, it has a color. Some colors you can't see because your eyes is not as good as a rat, or a dog, or a pig. They see different colors. Bees see different colors from you. So your eyes can't pick up all of the colors. That is not a problem. Some of those colors you don't need to see anyway, actually. White people should be transparent. <laughs> That's another subject altogether. But um, all I'm saying is you've been using the terms, but you haven't been associated with melanin. Because we don't want to tell you that that's what we're talking about. Sometimes we use what we call gods and goddesses, deities, what you call pectoralis, what you call rhomboids. Are you familiar with what I'm saying here? Trapezoids, do you know what I'm talking about here? Those are gods in Roman and Greek culture. Sometimes we use a God's name, sometimes we use a color name, sometimes we use a mathematical name. Mathematics is not a science. It was never taught as a science in Africa or in Greece. Mathematics is a language that a scientist uses to talk to another scientist. But it's not a science. It was never taught as a science. It's just that we all have been fundamentally miseducated. So a lot of things are difficult for you to understand because you're trying to get through your miseducation to be educated. 
It's not that scientists are deep and heavy, it's just you have to get to their language, which requires education. Because that's what basically you do if you study medicine. You study Latin for four years. You don't know a damn thing about the body, but you know some Latin. And that's all we do is we study Latin and get you totally confused. So we use one, a color name for something, two, a mathematical name, and three, a god or goddess, which we call a deity. That's what we do in science. We totally confuse you because we don't want you to know a damn thing. It's nothing personal. None of the scientists hate you or anything like that. It's just that this is the language we use is very confusing because they are very confused. Now then, every cell has a brain. That's why we call it a cell. If it's a molecule, we don't call it a cell because a molecule doesn't have a brain. We're very specific in science. Molecules don't have a brain. Cells have a brain. And the brain is called the nucleus, or the new sun. And that sun is called melanin, it's purple. So your bones have a brain, your skin has a brain, your glands have a brain because they are made up of cells. Your whole body is a brain, is what I'm telling you. So if you're thinking holistically, you're thinking with your muscles, your bones, your glands, your organs. And we can do a, uh, what they call a functional, that's a picture we take for MRIs. Uh, you've heard of this? Magnetic resonance. Uh, just say yes or no. <laughs> Damn, I'm a black person. <laughs> so, we can take a picture of you and see what bones light up and what glands light up and tell you whether you're happy or angry. Because every thought takes your whole body and when your body can't connect to your brain, that's what we call a stroke. A stroke is not brain damage, it's a failure of your brain to connect to your body. So it takes your whole body to be stupid, and it takes your whole body to be intelligent. Which means it has to be connected to your senses. Your sense of taste, your sense of sound, your sense of color, what you call your senses. Why are you looking at me like I'm a damn stranger? <laughs> In any case, I'm educated. Uh, yeah. So what I'm saying is, this is how the thought process works. I'm not talking about Greek science. A man, a Greek named Socrates, taught another Greek named Plato, and they made up the subconscious and the conscious and the preconscious. That comes out of Greek fairy tales. You don't know your brain because you were never taught your brain. We are miseducated. Where's the subconscious come from? Where, where? Where's the preconscious come from? Where, where? This has all been made up by the Greeks. And the Europeans are not Greeks. Be clear on that, the Europeans are not Greeks. So when you're studying white people, you're studying Greeks, but those are not the white people. They got you in captivity. You're studying a rat to understand a dog. It's crazy. These Europeans you're around are not Greeks. They study Greek and they say Greek this, Greek that, all that. But they're not Greeks. You're studying the wrong people to understand them. And I'm trying to get you out of that miseducation Remember, I've been totally miseducated. Totally. I'm just telling you how it started. It started with me being in love with Tarzan. I'm telling you, a white man in the jungle, and everybody running from him. You know, I mean, really. It was a good idea, really. Until I learned he was gay. And that upset me. I'm sorry, you going somewhere? You can go where you're going, brother. <laughs> That kind of upset me, and that's when I got upset with Pinocchio, because I like Pinocchio. Because we didn't have cartoons. Like, you have your cartoons with those things they draw. We had wooden dummies when I was little. And so, I was in love with a wooden dummy and a white man. <laughs> now, is that dysfunctional? <laughs> anyway, I'm just trying to say I was totally messed up. We couldn't afford jelly, because that was middle class black people to us. So we just made sugar sandwiches. We put the sugar in bread and squeezed the bread and ate it. Because we couldn't avoid jelly. 
I'm telling you about poverty. Not that stuff in the book, real poverty. We couldn't afford butter to put on our bread, so we put it on bacon fat, grease. You know what I'm talking about? We put grease on the bread because we couldn't afford butter. You don't know poverty. I had eight brothers and sisters. If you didn't get to the table first, your ass starved. <laughs> I was about 15 years old before. We don't go into no fairy tale stuff about the conscious, pre-conscious, my first mind. Well, what's your second mind? <laughs> you know, this is my subconscious. Yeah, is it in a subway? Like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> they make up this stuff, and you got to free your mind from that stuff to understand your stuff. Because you cannot access black intelligence with a white program. You cannot access black intelligence with a white program. was taught to us by our master, clapping out of rhythm. <laughs> black, black people clap together in a rhythm. We clap like white people. I'm just telling you the truth. If we get mad, we cuss like white people. Oh shit! I mean, yeah, can't you curse like a black person? I mean, we're so entrenched that we don't even see it. We're in the forest and we don't see the trees on purpose. I don't have any problems with white people. They're doing their thing and we should do our thing. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. They're doing their thing. We should do our thing. And don't concentrate on them unless you want to study rules. Another mm -hmm. subject altogether. So we have it. We have the idea that we use our whole body to think. You use your bones, your muscles, your glands, your organs. Sometimes you just use your bones and you call it psychic. No, that's just one part of your body you use. That's not psychic. Sometimes you just use your muscles. You say, I got a thought. No, you, that was your muscles. When you use your whole body, it's a different situation. But when you use a different part, you give it these stupid names coming out of Greek culture. So we got to free ourselves of them and let them do their thing, whatever it is. And we need to do our thing, whatever it is. And that doesn't include wigs or weaves. I'm just telling you, I ain't going there. There weren't no gay people on no damn slave ships. Be clear. I'm going to America and be a slave. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. That comes out of their culture. We got to claim our culture. That's all. That doesn't mean you have to own the daishiki, which you wear once a year during Black History Month. I know, I know that one. I'm just saying, just make it as black as you can. Whatever it is. If you're a shoemaker, just make it as black as you can. Support your spirituality, support your children. Support. That's making it black. It's not known in an African language. Knowing the African language don't make you African. Being an African is a state of mind. I don't think I'm brought to come over here speaking Swahili and Wolof. They don't know nothing. I was over there with them when they pig feed themselves. I'm telling you. Another subject altogether. <laughs> Let me keep this up live. So, I'm saying that this melanin may be a mystery to you, but it's not a mystery to the Europeans. They have a conference on it every four years, the Japanese and Chinese and Europeans, and they get together and they talk about it. They never invite anyone black. They have never done that in history. But they, they're studying. They know about you, more about you than you know about you. They over in Egypt now taking pictures of our stuff. They study us, but we don't study them. That's the problem. That's why I wrote 
uh, nutritional destruction of black people. I did 40 pages of cave history, how they act in the caves. Once you know how they act in the caves, you never have to study them again. Never. Mm. I go into their sexuality, their masturbation rituals, and their semen rituals and all that stuff. But uh, nonetheless, I don't want to scare anybody. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm not trying to scare anybody. You don't have to be, be knowledgeable about history to be free. Our ancestors didn't know nothing about no damn history. They just put their foot on the ground and said, I'm going to be free. That's all they said. Mm -hmm. They didn't study all this stuff you're doing about Egypt and Swahili and all that. No. They stuck their foot on the ground. The first they thought in their mind and said, I'm going to be free. That was it. And Harriet Tubman carried that rifle to kill black people. From Uncle Tom's. Oh, that Harriet Tubman, Master, she trying to tell us to go to Freedom Land. That's what you need to stop that. Oh, yeah, oh, Master. I'm just telling you, Master. Her tell me to try and take us to freedom land. I don't want to leave you, master. You know what tell me did? Turn around and put a cap in the ass. <laughs> I mean, uh, she uh, uh, silently, with blessings, killed him. <laughs> and that's what the rifle was for. Not for white people, it was for those Negroes. You know the oh, coconuts. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Black on the outside, white on the inside. We call them coconuts. Nonetheless, I just want to talk educated here. <laughs> so, what, what happens is that all of this begins before you are born. Before you are born, you think. Before you are born, you laugh. Before you are born, you grin. Before you are born, you suck your thumb. All of this stuff happened before you were born. Just because you emerged from your mother's uterus, which is called an emergency. That's the only emergency you'll ever have when you emerge from your mother's uterus. That's where the term comes from. But you were doing all this stuff before you were born. You, after you were born, you just improved your vocabulary, but you were always talking. You were always talking. We have decoded that language. You were always talking, you were always laughing, you were always... You always hate it. You always love. You just would use it in a positive way. But all the emotions you need to be free, they took away from you. It's not nice to hate. You know it's nice to hate? Yeah, it's according to what you're hating. It's not nice. You shouldn't be angry. Yeah, it's alright to be angry. It's according to what you're angry about. Every emotion we need to be free, they took away. And that's not just the Christians. It's Allah too. Just telling you, we need to just claim ourselves and claim our culture and we'll be just fine. Mm. This is not a hard thing to do, but it starts before you are born. How your mother carries you and how you are delivered shapes your life forever. It's the delivery that shapes your life. But the problem with that is the men don't know what their balls are for. I'm just telling you. They don't. Women know their system. I'm just telling you, the women know they have a uterus. That's where the menstruation occurs. You understand? The blood comes from the endometrium tissue of the uterus. Women know they have a uterus. Women know they have a vagina. I'm telling you the truth. But what's the epididymis for? I'm asking the men. You got it between your damn legs. What is it for? See? They don't know the reproductive system. Yeah, one brother knows. Yeah, you've been hanging around, around the balls too much. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, we're just miseducated. So the men don't even know what it's for. They just think it's for to have an erection. You know what I mean? That's not what it's for. It really isn't. What you nuts for? Christmas? <laughs> In any case, all I'm trying to say is... Today we're going to learn something other than don't eat white sugar and bleach white flour because that ain't going to happen. Most of you all are going to continue eating sugar. You know I ain't lying. And most of you all are going to continue eating junk food. But you won't walk out here without knowing what your damn nuts are for. <laughs> your testicles make sperm. That's what you call your balls. Which is similar to what? And women. Ovaries. Ovaries. Thank you. And then once the sperm is made, it leaves the testicles and goes into a sac beside the testicles called the epididymis. 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 That's where the sperm matures. 
you see, and it develops his personality in the epididymis. The epididymis is similar to the uterus, and the testicles are similar to the ovaries. So the testicles are on a solar cycle, and the ovaries are on a lunar cycle. The sun and the moon. Yeah. The sun and the moon had four children. Isis, Osiris, Nephthys, and all that. Yeah. You follow me. Everybody else is just looking at me. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I'm just trying to say, this is basic stuff that all the men should know. Really. And we should know this in what we call elementary school. That's where you learn your element, your body, your mind, your spirit, your emotions. And we call that an elementary education. So we, we once knew this before we were colonized and enslaved. Someone miseducated, so we don't even know this today, right? So the, the mothers may tell you when they gave birth that they had contractions. Uh, you guys have heard about that? Okay, contractions is not a mistake of God. Contractions are not a mistake. It moves the muscles of the baby. If you move the muscles of the baby, you move the lymph fluid, which fires off the immune system. Uh, it, it, you follow what I'm saying? Nature's getting the, the baby prepared for life outside of the universe. So it's gotta get the immune system up to speed. So the contractions move the muscles, and if you move the muscles, you move the lymph fluid. And the movement of the lymph fluid is called the immune system, which is made up by white people. It doesn't even exist. There's no such thing as immune system on any physiology chart in the world. This is something the Europeans made up. You can't have an autoimmune disease. There's no immune system. Where is it? Point to it. Show me. So we into there fantasies. But we don't call them fantasies, we call them theories. See? When they go to their superstitions, a fantasy, a guess that you can prove with another guess is called a theory. A guess that you can prove with another guess is called a theory. A guess that you cannot prove is called a superstition. A guess that you cannot prove is called what? A guess that I can prove with another guess. Yeah. So what we do is study European superstitions. Mm. And we think we're talking intelligent. Because mm. they teach us that. There's no immune system. You can't have an autoimmune disease. You can't have AIDS. It's immune system disease and there's no such thing. The problem is We've been so entrenched in this system that we take what they say for facts. There are very few facts in a science book. 95% of the stuff in a chemistry book, biology book, are superstitious. And you go around and say, this is the Lord. No, it's not the Lord, it's their ritual. No, it's not their ritual, it's their superstition. You gotta call them critters for what they are. I mean, these people for what they are. <laughs> but we don't, we're afraid to say that's their ritual. We're afraid to say it's a superstition of theirs. Why, I don't know. We have been miseducated. You follow me? Yeah, okay. So, did I get you out of the uterus yet? You, did you emerge from the uterus yet? No. Okay. No, we weren't. The men no. don't call it all. No. We don't say vagina and uterus. We just say pussy. Okay. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. You're sitting there jiving yourself. 
that's what we call it? I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> this wasn't good. <laughs> the uterus is not good because the penis never enters it. They, all they're talking about is the vagina. All we talk about is the vagina. And we should call it a vagina. But I don't think a brother can get excited and say, this vagina is good. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. So the first thing we see as a baby, when we emerge from the uterus, and our mother puts us on the breast, because the umbilical cord is long enough to reach a woman's breast. That's why God made it. So the baby should be put on the mother's breast, because they've been hearing this heartbeat for a year. They've been hearing this rhythm. Uh, I don't want to get involved in all of that, because I may get excited. So the baby is put on the mother's breast. And the first thing the baby see is the aureola. That's that brown spot around the woman's nipple, which produces oil to help the breast not to be chewed up there that the baby can slip on and slip off. That's why God made it. The ladies have a problem with their titties, they have a problem with the oil. So you need to oil your titties. Now the, now the subject all together. So the first thing, the baby sees that that circle around the, the nipple. And so from then on, children like circles. You look at any children's cartoon, you can see big circle eyes, big circle flowers. They like circles. Has anyone ever looked at a child? You understand? You about, yeah, okay. They like circles. So if you want to get us to like something, put it in a circle. Run a horse in a circle, a dog in a circle. You still mm -hmm. with me? That's why we into all these circles. That's why we like balls. They're circles. Yeah. We got ball games, soccer games. We like that because we after the woman's titty. <laughs> I'm just explaining food science to you in regular terms. They know how to attach you to things. We use circles, baseball, basketball, Circle, run a horse around in a circle, a dog around a circle, a car around a circle. We do a circle, we know you're going to like it. It's no accident. Now then, I got you into the circles. Maybe I didn't. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want nobody to demonstrate the circle for me. <laughs> Although it would be nice. So, now then, I'm just going to take you to... Um, I'm trying to get out of this sex thing, you know what I mean? Get more scientific, because everybody looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, the guy's looking at me, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, right, 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 right. So, we're going to do some simple math, okay? You can handle some math? Try. Yeah? Try. Okay. The outside lips of the woman's vagina get erect and protrude out. That's one. Are you still with me? Mm -hmm. The inside lips get flat and open up the vaginal vault, as we call it. How many is that? Three. The clitoris gets erect. How many is that? Three. Huh? Three. The skin around the urethra, that's where the ladies pee from, that gets erect and pushes down into the vagina. How many is that? Four. The mouth, the opening of the uterus, which we call the cervix, gets erect and gets longer. How many is that? Five. The vagina itself gets longer. How many is that? Six. How many erections do men have? Wow. Six? <laughs> we ain't talking about you. I was glad I was in London. <laughs> None. So by the numbers, who is more superior in sex? We men. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Because they, they pay the highest cost for it. Pregnancy, breastfeeding. It takes three times much more energy to breastfeed than to go through pregnancy. You see, it's a caloric drain. That's why they only have two fat storage spots that you call titties. That's just fat storage. It's about a ta two tablespoons of, at the most of my milk glands that make milk. The rest of it just storing fat to get through pregnancy. That's why they have all the fat in their hips. And mm. Have you ever seen a woman's hips? Why are y'all looking at me like that? <laughs> I'm talking about the booty and all of that. <laughs> it's a lot of fat around there because they need that fat to get through the breastfeeding. Mm. 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 
this is becoming very tiresome. <laughs> In any case, all I'm trying to say is we should have known all of this stuff and at one time we did know all this stuff mm -hmm. if we had an elementary education. Because it helps you to understand where your emotions come from. Because everything in nature starts from the root. A tree grows from the root. A flower grows from the root. Everything starts from the root. And your emotions start from the root, which is your brain stem. That's what I'm trying to get to. Everything starts from the root. This is just nature. But we don't tell you it's the root. In science, we say the brain stem. Everything starts from that root. Your emotions, your thoughts, and all. And that's when you get into all this uh, East Indian stuff about chakras and all that sort of stuff. It's just starting from the root and going up. And then it branches out like leaves on a tree. But we don't call it that in science, we call it a neuronet. That's the, all the branches of your emotion. Because all your emotions got to be attached to each other. Love is attached to anger. Because you can be in love with somebody and be angry with them. Because anger is attached to love. Are you still with me? Mm -hmm. Happiness is attached to hate. All of them are connected in what we call a neural net. You can't have one without the other, is what I'm saying. And nature did that on purpose. And what synchronizes this and puts it in harmony is called melanin. Melanin is a chemical of synchronicity, which you call bonding. Bonding is the ability to synchronize your emotions with someone else. Bonding is the ability to synchronize your emotions with someone else. So if I'm bonding to you, this is a lady, I'm not pointing to a man. If I'm bonded to her, and I'm in the US, California, and my temperature goes up, and she's in London, her temperature will go up too. Because we have synchronized our emotions. It's sort of like you're talking to your mother, you might say, I know there's something wrong with you. I can feel it. She has synchronized her emotions with you. And what synchronizes that is melanin. Now, if I want to take you out of your synchronicity, take you out of the rhythm, take you out of sorts, I break the bond between the mother and the father and the child, which we call the circle that's unbroken. You see, because in African culture, if a woman's pregnant, so is the father. Emotionally, I'm just trying to explain it. Mm. So, yeah. the lady's pregnant, the father is pregnant with the lady and the unborn child. <coughs> mm. Mm. Okay. And the mother is pregnant with the baby and the father. And the baby is pregnant with two adults birthing them as parents. Mm. Everybody's pregnant. Why are you looking at me like this? <laughs> this is me. He's going. We're listening. <laughs> but when you get into this Greek and European stuff, you break things up. So she's pregnant. <laughs> no, you are too. In, in fact, he's on a period every month and doesn't even know it because he's giving birth to sperm. Mm. So his diet should be more stricter than hers because he's pregnant every month. Not not coming again, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's making sperm. To make sperm, you bring yeah. it. And your testicles. He's, he wasn't talking about. So his diet should be much mm. more stricter than the ladies. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, right. what I'm trying to say is everyone is pregnant. He's pregnant all the damn time. See, what we, what we have to get past is our miseducation. It's not the information that's giving you difficulty, it's the miseducation. Mm. A lady is on birth control pills, is pregnant every month. The birth control pills do not stop conception, they just stop term. Mm. That's, uh, I don't want to lose nobody. The lady get, can be, get pregnant every month but she can't carry the baby, which we call term. Mm -hmm. So a lady that's taking birth control pills have an abortion every month. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. And this leaves an impression on the uterus itself. Mm -hmm. You see? That leaves an impression on a child that comes through that uterus to take them out of synchronicity, to get them lost. 
So your emotions can't connect to another person's emotions because you don't know emotions. You know Greek mythology, but you don't know emotions. Because love is an emotional language. And where did you learn emotions from? Your mother in her uterus before you were born. The first emotion you learn is called bonding and reattachment. I'm building an emotional tree to give blossoms of fruit now. I'm building the roots. The, 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 the plant has to bond to the soil. Is this difficult to hear? So the first thing you learn is bonding in the first trimester, which is trimesters every three months, which is a solar way of counting. And then you learn reattachment. That means someone can be attached to me that that's not with me. I'm still attached to them, but it, why do people look at me like this? Lord help me. So, in any case, reattachment is called peekaboo. You don't see your parents, but they're still attached to you. So you give them a reattachment exercise. <laughs>
working in tandem together creates an amazing, exuberant, extraordinary matrix of power, endurance, clarity, and fortification for yourselves, your bones, your kidneys, your organs, your brain waves to be electromagnetic in everything and all that you do. Super Mega Green Super Fools. We're electrified.